Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale Marvel figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at my favourite character from the Black Widow solo movie, Yelena. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it's pretty similar to the rest of the Black Widow line. We have the hourglass symbol with a clear window showcasing the artwork underneath, the Black Widow film logo, her name and some tech panel stuff on the white background. On the side of the box, the Black Widow hourglass symbol in green, a callback to her green vest, then her name and all the other random information down below. On the back of the box we have a Taskmaster symbol for some reason, not sure why that's there. Some more of those grey tech panels in the background, plus warnings and legal info. I know what you're thinking. Justin, have you gone mad, sir? A white figure on a white background? That is a recipe for disaster. Normally it would be. I think I've cracked the code. Hopefully I don't regret this. If not, it's always fun to try something new. It gets boring if I'm just doing the same thing over and over and over again. If I have cracked the whole white figure on the white background thing, that for me is a game changer, technically speaking. On the front, underneath the slipcover, a full spread image of Yelena. This is a really nice picture, it almost looks like a poster. Down below, fancy that, her name again. On the side, Yelena and the rest of that image from the front cover spilling over the edge. There has been a little bit of controversy surrounding this head sculpt. The prototype was stunning, I think we can all agree on that. The final product however in the blogger pics does look like it leaves a little bit to be desired. I don't mean to put down the bloggers, they do amazing work, seriously, their photos top notch. Sometimes on camera a figure just doesn't come across super well, nothing to do with the bloggers themselves. If you flip open the top cover, we do have an open window showcasing Yelena inside. When I said in the intro that Yelena was my favourite character from this movie, I meant it. You might be thinking, hang on a second, it's called Black Widow, what about Black Widow herself? I love ScarJo in the role, she kicks some serious ass. Florence Pugh, on the other hand, she was a breath of fresh air, she was funny yet a badass at the same time. First in hand impressions, pretty freaking good. What we are going to do now is get all of her accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything she comes with. Starting off with her display base first, which is done in the hexagonal style. We've got the Black Widow hourglass symbol up on top in a glossy finish and green, once again a callback to her vest. The Black Widow logo is glossy too, then the background is a nice matte textured finish, so it's grippy when her feet are standing on it. Around the front, Yelena Belova, up top an adjustable crotch grabber. Some people were really surprised when she was pictured with this. I'm not sure why, the prototype also had this on display, if you don't believe me go back and check my preview video, this was definitely there. The headphones were always supposed to be included. There's some speckling of dirt and grime on the earmuffs, the microphone is adjustable and I particularly like the metallic finish on the headband section, it's nice and shiny. You also have some proper wires around the back, they're not just sculpted there which is a good thing, if they were they would be super fragile. She can wear these and I will show you that later. You get three of these absolutely tiny throwing knives. The handles do have some shapes sculpted into them and they're painted fine. They're just done in gunmetal. No silver dry brushing, no chipping and no real detail at all. They're very flat and smooth. If you know what type of pistol this is, can you weigh in down below? I have no idea, I'm just not a gun guy and this, all I know about it is that it's a very small one. You can slide the top section back, it's spring loaded and you can remove the magazine. This is also the world's smallest magazine. You do have some painted bullet detail up on top though. That's the only paint here, this is all just cast in black plastic. No weathering, no dirt and grime, no chipping, just like those knives. You could use the excuse that this is factory fresh, although Yelena, she'd been kicking ass for a while. I don't think she'd have a brand new gun. Someone commented on my Black Widow video and said, these aren't batons Justin, they're a scrammer sticks like Nightwing. 
okay, if you want to call them that, that's totally fine. To me, they're batons. And when Hot Toys were asked which style of batons they wanted to include with Yelena, they simply said, yes. They included all of the variations. This one is just a straight up and down baton with a taser end, metallic painted linkages in the middle and some pops of yellow. Then there is blue for the handle and it's nice and textured. We get two of those. We also get two of these fully articulated ones with multiple joints. They are very bendable and I am getting addicted to bending this so we'll set that aside for now. Then the last one is this huge bad boy when she in the movie combines them and with some terrible CGI stabs the engine I think if I'm remembering correctly. It's a massive staff. This I could potentially see myself displaying with her. And lastly, just all the hands. So many hands. We've got open palm hands, we've got gesturing hands, we've got gripping hands, we've got trigger finger hands, and we've got closed fists as well. The gloves do have some wrinkling sculpted into the surface, and they're fingerless gloves, so there's skin texture for the fingers. My favourite detail on the hands, her nails are painted. They're a really nice shiny glossy finish. Hot toys don't do that very often for hands. What we are going to do now, though, is get Yelena herself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. This simple shot of having Yelena just rotating around with her stark white outfit on a pure white background and not having the edges blown out, this represents, for me, years of trial and error. Finally, I have cracked the code. What's that? You don't care? Sounds about right. Let's talk about Yelena. She's awesome. The body is all new and specific to her. The outfit is full fabric, which is great for posing. We all know, such a poser. Then she's got some armor bits and pieces around the place and her green vest, which adds contrast. Then the one thing that could derail the entire figure, the head sculpt. Is it bad or is it great or is it somewhere in between? Let's discuss. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Yelena's controversial head sculpt. Why? Why is it so controversial? I think this is a beautiful head sculpt. I reckon it looks just like Florence Pugh. I can see the likeness. I think the expression is on point. It's got this playfulness yet seriousness at the same time. The eyebrows are well done, the eyes look wet and glossy, and she's got some blush for complexion just on her cheeks and the tip of her nose. The hairline has got this feather to it and the sculpt work is sharp as a pin. Her earrings are separate dangly pieces on both sides. Then around the back, my favourite detail, the hair. Look at that braid work. Plus the skin tone just poking through with the various pieces where the hair would actually split apart. There are multiple layers of paint, both for the skin texture and the hair. Overall, I don't have any complaints with this head sculpt. I don't know why everyone's getting so freaking angry. Now, you can install her headset if you choose to. I don't like this at all. It sits up way too high. In real life, when you put a headset on, your hair would kind of sit down. Her hair being sculpted, there is a massive gap up top. You can adjust the microphone and fiddle around with it. I don't think that helps as much as it does just gets in the way. Remove the headset, just display the head sculpt like this. I think it's the best option. Look, at the end of the day, if you like the headset on, go for it. Who cares what I think? All that matters is that you're happy with your copy of Yelena and how you've displayed her. She does have her green vest on, which is full fabric, and there's some metal buckles down below. Her elbow pads and her shoulder pads, they're sculpted out of this rubbery plastic, meaning they are a little bit flexible. There's also some dirt and grime on the surface. Normally, I would go in for that. I like more detail rather than less. This time, her suit is so clean. It is at odds with the armor pieces that are weathered. It's not a deal breaker and it doesn't look terrible. I just would have preferred more weathering over the entire figure, not just in a couple of places. Back around the front, her iconic green vest. The vest itself, like I said around the back, is full fabric, so it won't get in the way when it comes to posing. We've got some mesh sections, more of those metal buckles, and a faux metal zipper around the front. It doesn't actually close with the zipper, it closes magnetically, it just snaps together. These little straps are on wires. You can pose them if you choose. Up top, the collar is also on wires. You can split it open to display the suit rather than having a closed vest and it will sit there. The magnets aren't 
too strong that they'll pull it closed all the time, not if you don't want them to, then the suit is very stark white. We do have these panels on the side that are a little bit more off-white, and a faux zipper down the front, painted in silver. For her arms, once again, we have the sculpted rubbery plastic shoulder pads and elbow pads. These straps do kind of get in the way for articulation. You'll find out what I mean later on. The suit, I haven't mentioned this yet, is also full fabric. It's got a lot of room in it too, so for posing, this is great. The less rubbery fabric, the better. No pinching, no buckling, no stretching, no damage. Then she has her widow bite braces, and the hands, they kind of connect in up underneath, so it looks seamless. Her belt has this rib texture on the surface that makes it look like actual fabric. It's not, it's also sculpted. Then the belt buckle is a widow hourglass symbol with some dry brushing on the surface. And for her holsters, it's an asymmetrical design. On one side, she's got three throwing knives. Yes, they're removable, and yes, more Black Widow hourglass symbols. Then on the other side, a holster for her pistol. The knee pads are permanently attached to the suit itself, and her body type is a little bit more full than Black Widow. She's got slightly thicker thighs, and it just looks, in my opinion, more believable. This looks like how Florence Pugh looked in the suit as Yelena. Coming down to the boots, they're a really good contrast. Being this darker off-white compared to the stark white of the suit, they will stand out. The laces, fully sculpted, and you just saw that this is a split-cut boot design. From the front, the split-cut rests in the wrinkles. You can't even really tell that it's there. From the side you can, and also from the back, unfortunately. There are washers in the crevices, multiple different layers of paint. You've got some darker grey and some lighter grey. Then on the underside, some sculpted tread that also has been painted. If you're wondering what she looks like without the vest on, yes, it is removable. It's not stitched in, it's not held in place with anything really, she's just wearing it like a normal vest, so you can remove it. Although now that I have taken it off, remember just before how I was mentioning that her proportions are a little bit more full than Natasha? Her waist is super narrow and so too is her neck. When you take the vest off, she kind of looks bobble-headed. For me and for a lot of people, I reckon we're just going to leave the vest on. It helps fill her out a touch more and makes her proportions look better. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, Yelena Belova. On the right, Natasha Romanoff, her sister, aka Black Widow. Or in this instance, is it White Widow, considering she is in her snowsuit after all? Which is why they work so well together. It represents that scene from the movie. Both of these characters coming together after all these years to bust their dad out of the gulag. Natasha is taller than Yelena. Her frame is different. She's got narrower shoulders, narrower hips, and skinnier thighs. I like that they're built different. It just goes to show that Hot Toys, they do care. If they didn't, they would have just grabbed the Black Widow body, popped it in Florence Pugh's outfit, popped that head sculpt on and said, there you go, there is your Yelena. Giving these two distinctly different styles of bodies with different proportions, that just makes them look like unique characters in the collection. I know I just said that the other combo was the perfect pairing, both in the snowsuits. I stick by that, kind of? This one is starting to win me over. Seeing Black Widow in her iconic suit with the gold details and the contrast with the black suit against Yelena's white suit, it might just pop a little bit more in the collection. If they're both in their white suits, they blend in better. They might not stand out as well as this pairing. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It all just comes down to your personal preference. If you like the way they look in their snowsuit standing together, that is the combo for you. If you like the black suit, then go for that one. Or if you like third-party Red Guardian like I do, this totally works. Having Natasha, having Yelena and Red Guardian all standing together, chef's kiss, hot toys, where the heck are you? You definitely need to make a Red Guardian. At least they made Taskmaster. If they hadn't and we were relying on a third party and they gave us the quality of that Red Guardian figure, I would have been very unhappy. He works as a background character for Taskmaster. She needs to be exceptional. And she is. Hot Toys knocked it out of the park with her. She is significantly taller than Yelena. I'm now thinking, ooh, wouldn't it be cool if I had Yelena, Black Widow, and Red Guardian all battling Taskmaster in the display. 
I might just need to get that done. Going over articulation, the question is, after she accused her sister, is Yelena a poser? Let's find out, starting off with her head sculpt. It's on a rubbery neck with a double ball peg. Looking forward to there, that is a crazy range of motion. Going back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. Her arms go up to there, completely unhindered by the shoulder pad colliding with the vest. Going forward and back, butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going past 90, then for the wrist peg, a hinge and swivel. The torso crunches forward and back, swivels and pivots. The legs go forward to there, the padding does fight you a little. Going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee going past 90, then for the boots, a split cut boot design. But it's not a double ball pick, it's kind of like an angled hinge and swivel. The pin goes in at an angle so you can get forward and back and swivel. It also gives you ankle rocker. So, is she a poser? I think she is. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing might not actually be that obvious on camera. In person, it is. Her neck is ever so slightly lighter in tone than her head sculpt. Super minor, still worth noting. The second annoying thing might just be even more minor than the first one. It's her suit material. Because it is so thin to allow for greater articulation, I suppose, it's almost a little bit transparent. You can see where it's been cut and stitched together underneath the fabric itself. It's also not even. On this side, this panel underneath the fabric is actually thicker than that same panel on the other side. The third annoying thing, there is no padding on the headphones. The earmuffs could have been soft, this top panel could have been soft. It's all sculpted plastic, wedging this over the head sculpt, spreading the ear cups apart, then sliding them on, it is downright scary. And if you're not careful, you will scratch the paint on the head sculpt. The first cool thing is how many different styles of batons you get. You get the single ones, you get the combined ones, that is huge, and you get the articulated ones. Plus, if you wanted to give one of these to a Black Widow in your display, Nothing's stopping you, you can totally accessory share. The second cool thing is the green vest. It can do a lot. Surprisingly, they've put a lot of attention to detail into this vest. The collar is wired. Heck, even these little straps are wired. It's got a magnetic closure, it closes nice and securely. You can also just leave it hanging open to expose the suit or remove it entirely. You can do a lot with the vest. The third cool thing is actually the head sculpt. Going into this, I didn't think I was going to like it at all. I thought, based on the feedback online and the blogger pics, no, it doesn't look anything like her. In hand, I reckon it does. If you can't see the likeness, totally understand. Likeness is, at the end of the day, subjective. I can see it. Then from a technical perspective, it's just well crafted. The skin texture looks real. The hairline is crisp as heck with that shading up the top. You have some individually sculpted earrings and that hair has so much detail in it. Am I happy with the head sculpt? You already know I am. Wrapping up on Hot Toys, Yelena, based off her appearance in Black Widow. Considering the film is called Black Widow, you would think that Black Widow, the titular character, she would be my favorite character in the movie. Nuh-uh. Florence Pugh as Yelena, she was my favourite character. I could not get enough on screen. She was just electric, and I cannot wait to see her again in the MCU. So I was waiting. I was hoping Hot Toys would make a Yelena. They did. They announced her. The prototype looked sensational. Then the final product picks came out. Then the debate started to rage. People were saying, no, this doesn't look anything like her. It's terrible. The proportions, the head sculpt, whatever, whatever. In person, none of those are a thing. This figure is fantastic. If you are a fan of Yelena and Florence Pugh, do yourself a favor, go ahead and get her. The head sculpt, very, very strong. Is it perfect? No. Is there room for improvement with a 2.0 potentially down the line? Yes, okay, of course, there always is. Right now, I don't hate it. I think it's actually one of their strongest female head sculpts ever. Once again, 
not 100% perfect. Then, the body. It's an all new body specific to Yelena. The only reason Hot Toys would invest in this kind of thing, making a brand new body for a one-off character, is if she isn't a one-off. They are planning on making more Yelenas in the future, otherwise they wouldn't have invested in this new style of body. The outfit is full fabric, and as we know, that is great for posing. No stretching, no peeling, no cracking, no creasing, and no material sticking to itself. So if you want Yelena in a crazy pose, go ahead and do it. There is no fear of damage here. At the end of this, I am ecstatic that I finally have a Yelena to add to my Black Widow display. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in for and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.